This video will discuss the concept of orthogonality in quantum mechanics and the fact that the eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator are orthogonal. Okay, so let's start off. We'll say if the integral over all space, so minus infinity to infinity in one dimension, of psi star m of x times psi n of x, which in Dirac notation is this bracket here, and mn, if that is equal to zero, then psi m and psi n are said to be orthogonal. So you might be familiar with the concept of orthogonality. Um, you can think of the unit vectors for x, y, and z. Those are orthogonal to one another. If you move a, par if you move a coordinate in y, it doesn't affect your x coordinate. If you move a coordinate in z, it doesn't affect your y. z doesn't affect your x, etc. These are all mutually orthogonal vectors to one another. They don't affect one another as their individual values, uh, individual magnitudes change. Okay, so we have our ket fn of x, our bra vector fm star of x from direct notation. So if we have the matrix element or expectation value integral man, which is equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi m star a psi n. So if they're orthogonal to one another, then this is going to end up being zero if n is an eigenfunction of the operator a. So let's start off by saying that this operator a is going to be some linear Hermitian operator. We have the ket vectors m and n, those are going to be eigenfunctions of a. So a acting on function n gives us the constant a n times the function n. a acting on the function m gives us a sub m times the function m. And each of those are scalars, which are real numbers, because these are eigenvalues of Hermitian operators, which we saw in the previous videos uh, have to be real numbers. So now, m a n, we know that a n, a acting on n, is going to give us little a n, so we have m a n. a n is a constant, which we can factor out of this integral. So now we have a n time, uh, times the integral of psi m star psi n, as we saw up there. All right, we can do the same thing uh, using the definition of a Hermitian operator. We have m a n equals NAM quantity star. So that is equal to NAM star times M because we have our uh, A acting on M gives us AM and that's AM star. So the complex conjugate of AM we can factor out here and that's AM times the overlap of N and M. So we know we know that these two integrals are going to be equal to one another and these two things are going to be equal to one another because by the definition of a Hermitian operator they are. So we have an times the overlap integral mn equals am star times the overlap integral nm which we know that am has to be real the eigenvalues of Hermitian operators have to be real so this is going to be am times the integral mn. These functions we can replace with one another. They're, they commute with one another. So this is going to give us that an minus am, if we move these both over to the same side, an minus am, times the integral over all space of psi m star psi n is equal to zero. <clears throat> all right, so we have are two different eigenvalues of this operator and we have the overlap of psi m star and psi n. So if these two eigenvalues aren't equal to each other, if they're what we would call non-degenerate, so not equal to one another, then this quantity isn't zero. So in order for this whole expression to be zero, this quantity has to be equal to zero. So this means that psi m and psi n are orthogonal because this is our definition of orthogonality for two functions. Their int the integral of their product over all space is equal to zero. 
So what we've shown here is that the eigenfunctions of Hermitian operators are orthogonal if they are non-degenerate. So for the Hamiltonian operator, the Hamiltonian operator is Hermitian, it is linear. For the Hamiltonian operator, if h psi equals e psi, we get the energy of psi m and psi n. If the energies are not equal, then those two functions are going to be orthogonal to one another. And this is a property that we'll make use of in future videos. And even if they are degenerate, even if they do equal one another in their energies, we can still always find a way to set them to be orthogonal to one another. So using the fact that the eigenfunctions of our Hamiltonian, which is a Hermitian operator, are orthogonal to each other, we're going to be able to derive a lot of useful results in the coming chapters.